Hi, welcome to my channel. Um, if you randomly came across here, hello. Um, I like to do a bunch of DIY projects like sewing and painting and recently I've delved into the world of selling principal products online. And when I first got started, um, I had no idea how to make something called a mock-up. So I'm going to make a video today that I wish existed when I first started my Etsy, st uh, my Etsy shop. And um, so what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to teach you how to make mock-ups completely for free. I know you probably think uh, you need to spend a lot of money to get all your pictures listed with all these beautiful mock-ups, but that's a common misconception. You don't need to pay any money to get started selling on Etsy. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, here's my Etsy shop. It's called Aesthetic Solace. Uh, I've almost been in business about a year. I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, and I sell mostly principal wall art, some principal stationery, but mostly principal wall art. Now, if you don't know what a mock-up is, which I didn't when I first started, so just trying to Google how to do this was kind of funny because I didn't even know what search terms to use. Let me show you what a mock-up is. So let me just go to one of my listings. So a mock-up is when you stage your product. So like if you were selling mugs with a picture of a dog on it, you would want a mock-up of that dog on the mug. Uh, a picture that is so for my shop most of my mock-ups are picture frames so this is a mock-up of a uh, art product I sell of a woman in her towel some bathroom art and you want to make sure you have a variety of like different style rooms so that the buyer can kind of visualize the product in their own space so here's like kind of a boho themed mock-up here's a bathroom mock-up another boho themed mock-up, a bathroom mock-up, a bathroom mock-up. So <clears throat> that's what a mock-up is. Um, you don't need Photoshop to do this. I'm going to introduce you to a software called GIMP. GIMP is basically the free Photoshop. You're, um, I'm not going to go into details today about how to download GIMP. Um, if you need help with that, leave a comment. I can try to help, but honestly, just Google um, GIMP download, and you want to make sure that you're downloading it for the type of computer you have. So whether that's a Windows or a Mac or like a Linux. Um, if I get enough comments asking for help, I can make a video on that. But for today's video, to keep it short, I won't. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you need to find a source image. Where am I going to find a picture of a picture frame? So. You can't just use any image you find. Um, you want to make sure you're using it legally. Um, some people sell mock-up photos, like literally sell pictures of photo frames that you can use for your shop. You can buy those if you want, but you don't have to. Um, I'm going to show you what I use a lot. It's called Unsplash. Unsplash is a website where anybody can submit any kind of photo and you can use it for whatever you want it's completely free and it's legal to do so so i'm just going to search picture frame <clears throat> so when you're looking for an image to use you want to make sure well you don't have to maybe i can make a video on more complicated frames later but to keep it simple and easy on you for this video at least, we're going to pick an image that um, the frame is mostly like straight on and square. It's not like tilted or anything. And there's no shadows casting on it, no light glare. Um, like this is a good one to use right here. Also, you want to make sure the image is at least 2000 pixels wide. Uh, that's just for Etsy in particular. You don't, it doesn't have to be that wide. Like I have a couple in my shop that they're like 1500 pixels wide. And Etsy will throw you an error, not an error, but it'll throw you a warning message that says this might not look the best quality. Pick an image that's 2,000 pixels wide, but it'll still let you. It, it looks okay. You don't want to go much smaller than like 1,500. So I'm going to download this image. And what next? We need to go to GIMP. 
Where's GIMP? Give me one second. What just happened? GIMP. GIMP, GIMP. There we go. So we're opening up GIMP. And this is what GIMP looks like. It looks very similar to Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. Um, the first step, we need to open that file we just downloaded. To do that, go to File, Open, and just find the image and click Open. Uh, you'll see this pop up. Just I like to keep the settings like that and just click Convert. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Here's our image, and you can see up on the ruler here, it says it's a little more than 2,000 pixels wide, so we're good to go there. Um, the first thing you want to do is we need to get rid of the art in this frame, right? So we don't want to show this art, we want to show our own art. So um, you're, go, you're going to want to go to the left over here, and you're going to want to click this Paths tool. If you don't see it here, Click on Tools, and then it'll be right here, Paths. So the way Paths works is you can, it's for creating like polygonal shapes, or like a square shape, or a triangle shape. Um, that's not necessarily true, but for the purposes of this video, we'll go with that. So we need to basically select a rectangle around the art. And to do that, we need to make four points with this tool, this Paths tool. So I'm going to scroll, or zoom in that is, into the left corner of the art, and I'm just going to click. Bam. There's a little anchor point. Now, you have to go around in a circle to do this. You can't click like in this corner, this corner, that one, that one. It won't work. Go in a circle. And it doesn't matter which way. So I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to click in the corner here. Bam. Go to the right, click in the corner here, bam, and then scroll up, bam. So I did four corners, but I need to connect it together to complete the rectangle. So I'm going to go back to my first anchor point, and I'm going to hold down the control button. You can see it's going to change when I hover over the anchor point like that, and then click. So now we've created one big rectangle. Um, I forgot a crucial step. So over here on the layers, so over here on the right, this is the dock for all your layers. So that's how Photoshop, not Photoshop, that's how GIMP works. You're, you're basically making an image with a bunch of layers. Right now we only have one layer, it's the image we imported. So you need to right click on this and click add alpha channel. I forgot that. It doesn't matter that we did it now and not at the beginning, but that has to be done. Okay, so I'm going to scroll in and just make sure everything is highlighted because sometimes even though an image looks completely square, it's not. Like I can see right here, not all of the white is selected. So I'm just going to hold, I'm going to click on this anchor point here, hold down my mouse and just move it down a little bit. And same on this side down. This needs to move to the left a little bit. Needs to move to the right a little bit. And this needs to move to the right a little bit more. That is good. Okay, so all of the art is selected. Did I add an anchor point? How do you... I get rid of that. I forgot. Ah, okay. I accidentally added an anchor point. So let me just teach you how to get rid of it. Click Shift Control, hold that down, hover over the anchor point. You're going to see that little negative sign and then click it. It'll go away. I'm kind of glad that happened. So, in case that happens to you, that's how you get rid of it. Okay. Now I have the art selected. I'm going to click Enter. You're going to see these little dashed lines start glittering. That means that 
you're now selecting that area and then you're going to click delete on your keyboard and now it gets rid of the art and when you on gimp when you see this checkered checkerboard pattern that's just empty space that's nothing there so basically your image right now is an image of this room with the frame and a big hole in it there's nothing there um to unselect this rectangle now click Control shift a and now we need to import our art so let me find some art i'm going to click file open as layers I'm just going to pick the same art I just showed earlier. Okay. Oh, that's not the same one. That's okay. All right. So you can see we have a problem now. My art is on top of the frame. So we've got two layers now. We've got the artwork and we've got the frame with that hole in it. It's in the wrong order. It needs to be like this. Kind of like a real picture frame. So you want the art under the picture frame. So to change the order, go to this little layers icon or dock over here. Right now we're hovering on the top layer, the art. Click on that and just drag your mouse down and it'll switch the order. Now we have another problem. The art is too big. So we need to scale the art. So make sure you're clicking on the layer with the art over here. Click Shift S. And now we can scale the image. Now you want to make sure that this here, this is on the lock position, not unlocked. If it's unlocked and you start scaling it, you can distort, uh, distort your image. So make sure that's locked. And you can just click on these corners here to start moving around your image. And basically, you just want to stage it in the frame. There we go. Scale. And there we go. It's staged. Now, I personally think this looks a little fake at this point. It looks very digital. I want to make it look like it's in the actual room and it's not a truly digital image. So to do that, we're going to first add a shadow to the frame. Then we're going to adjust the colors and the exposures on the art itself. And then we're going to apply a filter to the art to make it look like it's printed on canvas. So first step, add the shadow to the frame. So we're going to want to click on the layer with the frame over here on the right. Um, click filters light and shadow then click drop shadow okay so you can see it produced a shadow already there's a shadow right there and there's a shadow right there that according to the lighting in this in this room that's incorrect at this point the light is being cast from the right side so we want to replicate that in the frame so you have an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis is for shadows on the left and the right side. And then the y-axis is for shadows on the top and the bottom. So I need a shadow on the right side and on the top. Yes, that's right. Okay. So I'm going to click this unlock here because if it's locked, it moves them both together but I need them to be separated. So I'm going to click unlock and nope, right. there we go. So now the shadow's on the right side and then this should, there we go. So now we have a shadow on, no, yeah, that's right. Okay. So, um, what was I going to do? Okay. So there we have our shadows. If you want to decrease the opacity or increase it, you would do that with this right here. I don't want it that dark though. Um, you can change the blur radius. So if you want it like really blurred, that looks silly. I usually like to keep it as is. I think that looks good. So you can also change the color of the shadow. I usually never do. 
Um, but if you want to, you would just click this here and change the color. So click OK. Now we have our shadow on the frame. Uh, the next step is to change the coloring a little bit on the art itself. So sometimes, depending on the room, the room might look a little warm or cool. So a warm room has more like oranges and reds in it. And a cool room has more blues and purples in it. This room looks pretty warm to me. Like you can tell the pillows are actually white, but with the lighting, they look like an orange -ish, an orange ish white. So my artwork right now is pretty warm toned already, so I'm not going to adjust it. But if my artwork was kind of cool toned, I would want to adjust it a little bit to slightly warmer to fit the lighting in the room. If you want to do that, Make sure you're on the layer with your artwork. Click Colors, Color Temperature, and then on this Intended Temperature, you can just play around with that. So if I go down, it gets cooler, more blue. If I go up, it gets more orange. But I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit. It's not truly like bright white in this room. It's a little bit of a duller white. So we're going to lower the exposure. Just a little. That looks good to me. And lastly, I'm going to apply a filter to the art to make it look like it's printed on canvas. I think it looks a little flat now. Like, it still looks like a digital image. I want it to look like a canvas artwork. So I'm going to make sure still I'm highlighted on the layer with the artwork. Click Filters, Artistic, and Apply Canvas. And for mode, I usually like to go with Luma Luminance Lighten Only or the other one, Darken Only. I'm going to go with, or should I go with Darken? I'm going to go with Darken in this case. Just play around and see what looks good to you. Um, for depth, if you go higher, it looks like a really textured canvas. I don't want it like that, though. So I'm just going to put just the tiniest bit of texture. And I think that looks good there. If I scroll in, it looks like a canvas. I'm going to click OK. And that's pretty much it. That's how I stage my photos. And this is all 100% free. You don't have to pay for anything. Uh, to export this image, click Control shift e Or you can um, click File, Export As. And you just name your file whatever you want and save it. And then you can upload it to Etsy. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll try my best to help you. Um, if you want more videos about stuff like this, about selling on Etsy, how to do it, let me know and I'll try to make some more content. Um, let's see. Show me some love on my shop if you want. Support a small business owner. Um, it helps me to make some money to be able to make some more content for you. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, Trying to think if I'm missing anything. I don't think I am. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.